Welcome, everybody, back to the Siegel Talks here at the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center at the Graduate Center CUNY at the City University of New York in New York City. Um, New York is at the moment the epicenter in the world of the Corona Welcome. crisis. Again, we had um, over a thousand um, uh, a dead people uh, in, in a day. Um, and so we are contributing and um, listening um, to, to the artist uh, in, to find a way to cope with this crisis, to find meaning um, in these days, in these unprecedented times. And as always, artists have been on the right side of uh, social progress, of justice. And um, we should have listened to them uh, much, much uh, better. They detect things, they anticipate um, the future. That's what so many plays, uh, poems, or uh, ideas for the stage deal about, deal with. And um, so today we have two representatives from um, Eastern Europe, from Romania, um, with us. It's a, a great honor to have with us Mikhaila Tragan, who was um, with us um, at the Siegel Center already for the Penwell Voices Festival. And we have also Mikhaila Mikhailov uh, with us. And, and they will tell us a bit uh, um, about the situation in Romania and Bucharest. Um, the Siegel Center always has British Academia and professional theater, international and American theater. But in these days, we feel it's really a responsibility to listen to uh, he also hear from um, all parts of the world where our theater colleagues in theater and performance, how they experience this crisis. And, um, and so we get a, perhaps a better view of the world, but also of their real uh, thinking about it and the um, philosophy behind their words. So uh, Mikaela, uh, uh, hello, uh, both. Where are you guys? Are you uh, in, in Bucharest and what time is it? Perhaps a better view of the world. It's 7 p.m. Yes, we are both in Bucharest. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there um, uh, is, um, I think there's a small echo. I don't know if it comes from my phone or um, if anybody has a, a, a listening to the talk at the same time. Maybe yeah. HowlRound can help us, um, but um, there um, uh, is, um, I think there's a small echo. I don't know if it comes It sounds like somebody has the live stream open on their computer. I'm gonna go ahead and double check and make sure you have all your windows closed. Uh, maybe one of yours. HowlRound can help us, um, but um, are, Might it, maybe it's HowlRound. Um, so this is live, as you Mikhail, guys uh, see. Mikhailov, it looks yep. like you may be having a, a little extra audio. Um, Mikhaila, can you maybe you reconnect? Can you shut get out of a, a Zoom talk and maybe reconnect? And I speak with Mikhaila at the at the moment. Okay, we'll try. Yeah? Try and shut out of the programs again. So, Mikaela, um, okay. uh, tell us. Um, Maybe you reconnect. Can you shut it out of the. I also hear the echo. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I can. I mean, I can answer. Yeah. yeah, these are the echoes of the virus. So maybe it's already in the uh, in the thing. So, uh, Mikaela, Mikhailov, I think uh, Halwan said it might be on your computer. Could you get out of Zoom, sign out? completely and then rejoin us and make sure everything is closed? If you close your browser window, that should also help it. If you have Chrome or anything else open. I think her yeah, computer think she is frozen. She, she is redoing it. Um, so Mikaela, um, tell us a little bit um, what's going on in, in, in Romania. Uh, for how long have you been uh, in, um, in, in, in self-confinement in your apartment or maybe not, maybe you can go out. What's going on in Romania? No, no, no. Actually, no. The, there are many restrictions here in Bucharest, and uh, since 16 of March, actually, it started. And actually, the police are giving us big, super big fines, so everyone is afraid to go outside. So, what and is the idea? You have to stay at home, or you can go out visit. You can you go take a walk in the park? Can you go shopping? What is the idea? Yeah. Only, only with, uh, only with a document, with like a kind of declaration, you know, like uh, allow us to get uh, to get outside, and we have to specify the reason for which, and we are allowed to go to the stores, or yeah, to move a little bit, but the parks are closed, so we can't really <laughs> move, <laughs> and um, yeah, and maybe if we have a medical urgency, we are allowed to get 
out okay. but actually no the i mean uh, the we are really afraid of the police and uh, we i mean i know that all my friends we are just isolated in the in the house and nobody's getting out i mean and you are afraid uh, what from, from the police uh, what what would happen uh they they give big big fines actually are the biggest fines from uh, europe i understood i just read an article about this like they can get to around four thousand euro yeah actually like four thousand euros incredible yes, exactly. which is about five thousand dollars yeah exactly and we just experienced all these fixed fear last weeks a lot of abuses from the police especially towards roma community i mean everyone is shocked by all this violence and tell us a bit i, I know and our viewers might not know they might not have read about you are part of the roma community in romania so tell us a little bit about that experience yeah actually be, when everything started a little of uh, Romanian immigrants started to come back to Romania, immigrants from Germany, Italy, Spain, and so on. And among them, a lot of uh, a, a lot of Roma, but they were not welcome back. And they just uh, been seen like uh, the virus, like they come with the virus and they don't keep um, the confinement um, uh, rules and so on. And we just we just uh, saw a lot of online harassment it started like that and after the police going to the to the communities and just beating up uh, children men and roma women so yeah can, like, it, can i stop you there can you say was, that again it the was police open. goes into family uh, houses or into the community and is beating yeah, up yeah, yeah. women yeah, and children exactly. because they think they are carriers of the virus yeah, exactly. And because because they argue that they don't keep the confinement rules, like they don't stay isolated, but actually they are living in big, they are like big families and they are living, many of them, they are living together. So yeah, it was just a reason to, uh, yeah, to entitle all this violence against Roma families and Roma houses and Roma communities. And we just saw this like, not only in Romania, but in the whole Europe, like I've just read reports from Hungary, Bulgaria, Slovakia, yeah. <laughs> so I've been a lot, I've been distracted by all these things in the last few, few weeks. And um, I just hope that everything will come to the normal because it's unbearable. <laughs> so where do you live? Where is your, how is your living situation in, in, in Bucharest? Where are you and what neighborhood? And it's like I'm a I'm a privileged Roma person because I'm living exactly in the center of the of Bucharest in a in a flat with a lot of white people so no nobody will come to my door even even that my mother was afraid of this like she just uh, uh, she just told me like few days like, few few days ago to stop posting about the the racism and all the violence towards Roma people because she's really afraid <laughs> for me and I just tried to to calm down her because I'm living in a very good neighborhood here in Bucharest mm -hmm. and um, yeah among white people so probably I'm not a target. Where does she live your mother? My, my, my mother, she lives in another city. Actually, she lives in a Roma neighborhood. And uh, she, yeah, she, I mean, she's happy because she has a kind of garden and she can get out from time to time. But uh, yeah, like everyone is afraid. Of, so <laughs> we just wait now for the 15th of May, like in two weeks, we'll be allowed to get out without this declaration. I mean, we'll be allowed to get out only wearing a mask, a protection mask. So I really hope that the things we'll try will improve. And yeah, because now it was a lot of fear. I don't know how the other Mihail experienced mm -hmm. <laughs> this crisis, but for me, it wasn't easy. And yeah. yes, I've been distracted from my work by all this violence. Mm -hmm. So has your mother seen those police brutalities? It's happened to friends or family or... Um, um, <laughs> It hap it happened not to my not to my family, but yes, to friends. Like for example, to friends or people with whom I've been working in the past in the Roma neighborhoods, 
because I've been working a lot with uh, Roma women from the Roma neighborhoods in forum theaters and so on and like yeah like the monologues you showed at yeah. the seagull were you know from uh, based on lives on the, of the women right yeah and exactly and friends of them and like the like police just just uh, abused them in the, they were just there in the Roma neighborhoods we have here two or three Roma neighborhoods where mostly Roma people are living so yeah I heard a lot of uh, abusive situation also from the other cities around Bucharest like the police just trying to intimidate them I have friends who are living there and they are afraid to go outside to the store because like a lot of police is uh, is around it and they try to intimidate them and i just spoke with a friend that she has um, she has uh, two uncles that they they are disabled and they were really scared you know by all these uh, graves of the police so yeah this do is do you think the police is order to do that or do they do that on their own or is there an order out from it is like higher of course up? I mean, of course, like they were, they were people that addressed this uh, to to the government. But it's like the government is also uh, entitled them to do this. Like we can't uh, we can't really rely on our government that really like took the power now and not in a good way at all. So they are not, uh, of course, like the Roma organizations, NGOs, like um, the Roma movement tried to complain and make petitions and so on. But um, there is so much hate speech now, you know, like I just feel that the racism increased so much now during the pandemic that it, there is nobody here to defend us, to defend Roma community. Yeah, so it's tolerated, if not perhaps exactly. uh, encouraged, yeah. Exactly. Media also is encouraging a lot the hate speech, like Every day we, we just read the racist articles about how Roma people, they don't respect the confinement rules. So this is why the police try to, you know, to make them to respect the rules in a mm -hmm. very positive way. So, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, is, that, is, that is shocking to hear. Of course, there are different, um, different uh, traditions of living together, different ways of living together over centuries and um, they have a need to be respected, and uh, and it is uh, shocking to hear that in a European country, um, that police will go to innocent people's homes and beat up women and children. I, I'm I'm shocked to hear that. I haven't read that anywhere. Um, that should be on front page news. Um, it's uh, shameful, and um, for sure not uh, not a good good sign for the uh, uh, Romanian country to 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 also have this. Of course, next to many other things, but this is a reality there. Mihaila, Mikhailov, yes. um, thanks yeah. for being back. And uh, sorry yeah. about the difficulties. We should have checked that earlier. We didn't hear it when we do the sound check, but um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, as things do happen, and um, and uh, who knows uh, how how other viruses are uh, infecting <laughs> our uh, communication. So um, tell us a little bit. Uh, how are you experiencing this uh, um, moment? Yes. Yeah. I will just uh, I will just uh, um, say a little bit uh, about what Mihaela said because I think it's very important that all this uh, emergency uh, uh, state, in fact, uh, uh, encourages and emphasizes different types of violences, and uh, the fact that we have very uh, how to say um, that that we have governments uh, who don't uh, really take care. Of, of their citizens, that's that's a problem that we saw in Romania this month. For instance, we also saw a government which was completely incapable of protecting the citizens who went to work abroad uh, and who went who left Romania in very uh, in very precarious conditions because they have no possibility to work here. So they had to go to Germany, and we we assisted at various. Uh, we saw various images which were really, really, uh, uh, how to what say. What did you see? What, what images did you see? We saw, we saw for instance, uh, in an airport in Cluj, in, uh, in, uh, um, 
like uh, thousands of people, uh, very, uh, very uh, uh, desperate because they had no possibilities to stay here and to work in Romania. And they were leaving the country with no measures of uh, security. Uh, and they went to, to Germany and uh, to work there. And we also heard about and read a lot of articles about the conditions they, they worked there. And of course, we know this happened also before but when you say that uh, uh, citizens that uh, in our country we are not allowed to leave our homes and when you see such images in fact you 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 are confronted with a very uh, with a very unstable and with a very problematic uh, state and I guess all this uh, all this uh, month we, we we saw the the incapacity of the government to really protect uh, precarious people uh, to really uh, uh, have, a, have a standpoint and to really, in a way, fight for all these people. And this is really, really, it's very violent to see all this, uh, all this going on. Um, yeah. So let, let me just, so everybody has to stay at home, but seasonal workers like Romanian uh, uh, workers who, for example, worked for asparagus, uh, um, exactly. season or others, they were allowed to go out exactly. with exactly. no security measures together in big groups. And then exactly. they go to Germany. If they come back, people think they carry disease on both sides, wherever they will go, they will be looked at as uh, people who bring, uh, uh, bring the coronavirus. Is that, is, do I understand that right? Yes, 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 yes. You understand it right, and uh, the all the the declarations and all the um, uh, when the government was asked and when the president was asked how how could this be how this was possible, uh, all their uh, all their uh, uh, affirmations were completely outrageous. If you really see the the situation, the fact that you 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 have no protection for for all these people because all these years you haven't cared about them and all these years you haven't had as a state politics uh, of protection of all these workers and we we saw people who couldn't uh, uh, I don't know go from Italy to Romania who just called the embassy and nobody uh, answered them so desperate people desperate care workers yes so there were quite uh, violent images so seasonal workers would try to get back to Romania and Romania would not let them in? No, yeah, no, I'm talking about the moment when uh, Romania said uh, that uh, it's very, as Mihaela explained you, that it becomes mm -hmm. problematic for an Italian who was working abroad to come back. And the Romanian government said you shouldn't come back because there is coronavirus and it's very problematic. And all these people in different other countries, Italy, Spain, uh, they, just, uh, they just found without any support and any financial financial need and we had like uh, I don't know uh, uh, women who were working in Austria and uh, the people they they cared about uh, uh, they were old they they died and the women had no possibility and no financial support from from the state to come back to Romania to come back to Romania yeah but were they asked to come back and um... Or did, they, did, did the government say, stay where you are? So on one hand, thousands were allowed to leave in chaotic circumstances without masks to do to work as former, ignoring all health advisories. And then the people who are already outside are not supported to come back in a way that yes. is safe. Is that is that right? Yes, they are not. They are not supported, and they are not even encouraged to come back. I mean, the the they were said you should remain there you should try to remain there even if for for some of them was completely impossible to remain there because they had no financial support and they had no possibility to remain there yeah that is that is uh, uh, totally shocking we had a call from um, an earlier in india with anarupa roy who's a pop great puppeteer and she said she looked out of the streets to new delhi and 500,000 people like these seasonal worker people who work in people's home 500,000 try to leave New Delhi uh, on feet uh, with children on their back and their belongings in a suitcase. Some prepared to march a thousand kilometers um, without food, help, and um, 
So they started to leave and, uh, uh, and they also were, I guess, attacked by the people along the road. People had to help feed them, but people said, we can't do that, then stayed. Borders closed, they were sent back, but they had no place to go. And uh, many people in New Delhi do great work to, to try to care for them. I was not aware that um, such a, the traumatic um, 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 uh, circumstances are also happening um, in Romania, and uh, wh what does the what do the Romanians say? How does how do the Romanian people uh, uh, look at this? Is they do they think it's just a small minority? It's not a big problem. Uh, is there is there a civil dispute about this? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just. I mean, we have only the social platforms now, where uh, yeah, a lot of people are is more and more present, and of course, like they they argue always, like is this more leftist part who really try to to support and talk a lot about um, these workers and what was happening and the position of the government. And yeah, is the is the other side who is supporting the government? I I suppose, but um, uh, yeah, we just we just for example, we just waited now to see how how the situation after the urgency state will will improve, like what will be. Uh, allowed for us and we just I mean I just talked with Mihaela before about this like do you have any news about theater what will happen they will open the theater and uh, actually we don't we don't know anything now from the I mean they they just announced that they will uh, reopen the museums yeah but uh, I just deviate a little bit from the from the topic sure. <laughs> But uh, uh, yeah, I think a lot of a lot of people like he, in Romania. I mean, they don't believe that the virus exists. Like I saw, I saw a lot of this. Like, and especially the old people. Like we, it's very funny the situation. I don't know if um, Mihaela knows more because I know that she has been she have been working with uh, with uh, more old people in the in theater the the last years but uh, like what we experience here in Romania is like the people they don't really believe that the virus exists and they just uh, uh, fight and there are a lot of conspirations uh, regarding this and um, why the government wants us to believe that this virus exists but actually no and uh, yeah I mean uh, I think are many different opinions regarding all this uh, situation and coming back to to our position as theater makers like we are really confused about what is going to happen uh, in the next months for us because like you no know, like the we heard that the museum will be reopened, but there is no solution how the theater will be reopened. And I, I don't think this season, this stay season, will uh, will our will will going to work again. Yeah, yeah, and I guess um, what is really is really problematic is that they. I mean, we are not confronted with any plan. We don't know how it will happen, when it will happen, as Mihaela said, when the theaters are going to be to be open, in what conditions. And of course, there are a lot of problems for independent artists, for artists who are very, uh, who are dependent uh, in a way on, uh, on every project, because um, if you now, if you just have independent projects and your projects cannot be, cannot be your theater pieces cannot be performed. So, and you don't know when or if they are going to be performed of course your precarity becomes more and more uh, uh, problematic and uh, nobody really really talks about this of course they imagined uh, a little help let's say financial help for the artists who are independent but also with a lot of uh, uh, bureaucratic aspects um, but in fact what is really in a way uh, what we are afraid is that we are we don't have a plan and nobody really knows what is going to happen and of course those who are really depending on projects and are really like uh, if i know i will have my piece done or not for those people is really really complicated and it will also be 
because we are in a country where all the independent sector, all the independent artists, in fact, are financed only by one, um, why one financial source. So we have one financial source for the whole country, for all the independent artists. And um, it's really, really problematic. Hmm. So um, is there a free press in that sense? Do people, are there, the t television news and, uh, and in writing, do you feel um, people are um, informed in a way about the virus and about uh, and the situation uh, in, in, in Romania, the, with all the problems and the situation of artists? Is there uh, access to information? Uh, I think, in my opinion, yes, like I've seen a lot of uh, news on television and I think, yeah, the people are informed and this is why it's like very funny for me that I meet when I meet all the people outside or to the store, they have all this conspiracy in their mind and they don't protect, they don't really protect themselves and because like I'm, when I go outside, I, I really try to have a mask and everything and I still a lot of old people that they don't really use uh, protection. So, yeah, I think I forgot the, the first question. Yeah, so, so there are cities that's perhaps of the history that governments cannot be trusted. People will not trust whatever. When yeah, yeah, something yeah. even real uh, in a way comes up. And I going think, back yeah, to, that's... yeah. Regarding the information. Yeah, I feel, I feel that, yes, there's a lot of information. Like, I, I don't know if it's, because of me, I have access to the, all this information, but uh, I, I feel that people, they are really talking about this. It's like, yeah, it's the first topic. Of course. <laughs> Is the government doing a good job in Romania? Um, no. No? No, no, it's not. It's not. It's not because, as I said, they are, in my opinion, they are more concerned about uh, uh, little enterprises and uh, about the business sector and about uh, going back to economy. And uh, they are not so concerned about different, uh, about uh, precarious people, about people who cannot uh, have um, the privilege to stay home because they cannot, uh, who don't know uh, if tomorrow they have a job or they don't have a job. So this, of course, there has to be an interest in economy and I can completely understand it. But the price, I guess, is sometimes is too big. And uh, the fact that the government in all its public debates and uh, doesn't have solutions or, or tries to uh, not to see the realities of different other categories, it's really, really problematic and we see it every single day. Mm -hmm. And how are the infection rates or and people dying, is it uh, moderate? Uh, has it arrived fully? Is it behind you? Uh, I think we didn't reach the peak, like in this moment, you, you, you want to know about the cases, yeah. how many Mm -hmm. We have, I think there are 40,000 around, yes, around yes. now, and uh, 860 deaths, something like that. Yes, yeah. I just mm -hmm. in the more. But people are not very, I'm not tested, you know, so we don't, we really, really don't know exactly because uh, uh, they are not tested, so we cannot say. Quite there are no tests available and. Yes, so we cannot say very clearly what is the real situation, in fact. Mm -hmm. And one doesn't know how many people have died because of it, because it's not always counted right. And the interest of often is to project a social order that's not, not really there. For you as leader artists, is there help? You said that one organization, for you, is someone give, offering you help? Uh, <clears throat> I assume for the next five, six months, everything has been canceled, I assume. Is there help for you? I mean, it's a little help from the government, from the indep for independent sector. So you had to apply with an email or? Um... Yeah, we have to. Yeah, it's very bureaucratic. As mm -hmm. I last said, it's really like I try to do this and I gave up <laughs> at some point. What did you have to do? Let me know. Like just to sign some things, to to send them some documents, like to 
like some con yeah because like one uh, one they they will uh, they will give you some help only if you have a contract in the last three months you know and this is you know like there are many independent artists they they work you know you know how it's yeah. when you are freelancer so yeah there was this uh, this condition to receive this help and actually is uh, only until now only in may so i don't know if if the art, independent artists they are going to receive more help after this date and is like if i'm not wrong um is uh, is around Five hundred dollars, something mm -hmm. like. That. It's not a lot. Yeah. Not so much, yes. It's not a lot. And um, yeah, and you have to make uh, yeah to make this application that is like for me didn't work, <laughs> but um, we we'll, we we'll now we don't know what is going to happen after this date after fifteen of May. Uh, I suppose they I mean the correct will be just to prolong this uh, this little help. Mm, so you like gave up. <clears throat> it's so complicated to do. You you kind of um, um, gave up. Mihaela, how is it for you? Um, I I I have a privilege in the sense that I'm also uh, having uh, classes at the university in Bucharest, so I'm also there. And from this, you teach point playwriting view, or yes, I'm yes. teaching playwriting. So from this point of view, I'm let's say more stable. But uh, we have also problem with the space we have, the replica center, because it's an independent space. And now, because we don't have any, any kind of activities, we really don't know if, if or for how long we will be able to, to have the space in Bucharest, because we have to pay the rent and all other things. So uh, yeah, it becomes, uh, it becomes more and more difficult in fact to be an independent artist in Romania these days. How is the situation for, for, for this kind of as you call it independence theater? How how well let's even before the bar, how well is it funded? Do people come? Is there a need for it? Um, is it a small audience, a bigger audience? How how um, how are you connected to life in Bucharest? I would say that, uh, of course, in the, the independent spaces in Bucharest are not so big, so um, it's less than 100 people that you can have. Um, it's quite difficult because we are not, we don't get uh, financed uh, for the space, we get financed for projects and we have to be sure that we always put some money aside in order to be able to, to have the rent paid. Uh, but I guess in the last years, the independent sector quite developed. What it's a pity is that some independent spaces, because the financial conditions are very precarious, they just disappeared and they were really, really important, but uh, it was very difficult for them to, to, keep on, uh, to keep on going. And it becomes more and more difficult in these times to, to be able to, to pay the rent and uh, all, the other, uh, all the other things, as I said. But I think it's important that they created an audience and that they developed uh, an audience and sometimes I guess also Mihala can say because she does amazing things with her company they did more for instance than the public sector and it's also important because we have very very few for instance public theaters who are really really eager to collaborate with the independent sector we have the Jewish theater, we have the small, uh, the, the small theater, but these are very, it's, it's, it's very, in a way, of course, it's good that it is, but it's not enough. It's less than, than enough, and this is also a problem. In fact, public theaters, the problem with them in Romania is that they are, um, most of the times, they are uh, interested only in productions, uh, in productions that don't uh, don't risk, that don't, uh, for instance, uh, I don't know, approach, let's say, um, political or social themes, they quite uh, they 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 don't want to go into this. Apart from the exception I told about, uh, 
and um, it's difficult for you as an artist who has an interest in various topics and who is in a way social or political it's quite difficult for you to to connect with them and uh, yeah you you see they are quite not interested <laughs> How is the reception of your work? And Mihaela, you come out of the Roma, Roma community, um, your exceptional work you, you, you do um, with um, telling their stories, but also telling stories for women in Romania. How, how is the reception of your work? Uh, I think in the last two years, the, the work have improved in the, um, because like we, we started to collaborate so yeah, with few state theaters that they were eager to collaborate with us. And this was a big step for us and especially for our community because never ever a Roma production was in a state theater. And um, I think I have the impression that all the independent sector in Romania, we have our own audience. I mean, I have this feeling, you know, that the audience, uh, the Juglipen audience is also going to Replica or to other independent companies that they, we are doing more political theater. They are specifically interested in this kind of uh, theater. This is why we wanted to penetrate it also the mainstream audiences and have productions in the state theaters where the audience is uh, less aware let's say about all these uh, topics and they are used with um, with another kind of uh, theater that um, yeah <laughs> and uh, i i have the i have the impression i mean the last two years for us in jubilpen they were really good because like we we had the production with the jewish theater we had another production with another state theater from another city that rulande mureșanu that um, I really, I really like their uh, their productions and the repertoire, and uh, I think yeah, there is we had uh, a good feedback. Of course, like everything is very new somehow for the audience. Like even uh, seeing a whole Roma cast on the stage is a big thing, you know, for for an audience that never was used to mm -hmm. see this, or like. The last year, we 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 work in this, this uh, small theater in another cities because, like, if Bucharest is somehow more used with political theater and with the topics that we are are working with, like in the small cities, the things are not the same. So it was. Um, it was very interesting and I think it's, it's a work that we have to do, like to just penetrate yeah. more state theaters and go to these cities, you know, where the audience is not, never have seen, you know, a whole Roma cast on the stage mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, like we just had this last show about Roma futurism and about the future. It was a lot about technology by the way we really cursed uh, boris johnson and when he catch coronavirus <laughs> we thought that is because of us <laughs> but okay yeah. so you stayed. did some witchcraft which you put in your place yes I yeah, know. yeah yeah it was actually techno witchcraft and it was very funny we really laughed because we spoke the whole show is about the computer virus that um yeah, and we just cursed fascist uh, politicians from Europe, and one of them was Boris Johnson. And um, it was very funny when when we heard that he he has coronavirus. <laughs> that maybe like our curse. <laughs> Coming from Germany, of course, I feel it's a tough word to use, fascist. I mean, it has to be careful. But certainly, uh, lots of politics he implemented, and his goal to get uh, the UK out of the European Union is something we do not uh, support or wish it would it would not have happened. Um, for, um, I, I know even in Germany, I think the Gorky is one of the first theaters that put on Roma plays. Also, we haven't really seen that. We haven't really um, focused um, um, on that important, you know, um, issue that is that is out there where theater also really can, can communicate something and can, and can, can tell stories. Why do you guys uh, do theater in Romania? Um, what what is what is making your motor work? Why why uh, doing this in such difficult circumstances? 
Yeah, I feel that uh, I'm, it's very important to be here. I feel that Romanian need us. And yeah, specifically because like, I feel, I mean, comparison with Berlin, I think Berlin is, is more used with Roma production somehow. Of course, like Roma Army was the first show and Gorky was, you know, on a big stage and so on. But there were all these years, small productions and like Berlin audience, they they had access somehow to Roma theater. And uh, I mean, of course, like many times I'm thinking of moving from this city and I, I'm fed up with everything what is happening here. I mean, in the last years I had the privilege to travel a lot and working in other countries. So it, it was easier to stay here from time to time and to work here. But uh, I feel that the work that we we do, like me and my my colleagues from Juvlipen, like is very needed here in Romania because like here is a special environment. We have a whole history of racism here, and we don't. I mean, this is why now we Roma people are so abused because it's not this. Uh, collective, you know, memory about the slavery, Roma slavery, Holocaust, and so on. And um, we we have to do this work through through art, like, and uh, many, many times, like, after our shows, like, I'm just surprised that uh, people, they don't know anything about Roma people here in Romania, even if we are living here for a centuries, you know, so, I think, yeah, it's, uh, we have to be here and we like the work that we do is very important, especially here. But yes, I'm, I'm really thinking many times like just to leave the country and I have this impulse that I have to leave, <laughs> I have to leave. And uh, sometimes, yeah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of pressure because like having this responsibility as an artist, you know, is a lot of pressure to talk about these topics in your art. This is why the last uh, year I've been working so much on uh, Roma, future, Roma futurism and developing this topic about Roma people in, in the future because like, we as theater makers, we always feel this pressure to talk about this unknown and unrecognized uh, past, oppressive past and oppressive history. And this doesn't uh, give us space to think about us in the future or having access to, to technology or imagining us exploring the space or so on. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not easy, but I think it's, meaningful at the end of the day to do this here. How is it for you, Mi Mihaela? The, um... mm, for me, in a way, um, it's like Mihaela said, um, I guess for me, theater is also um, responding to some local realities. And I think it's, I'm, I feel more connected to our political uh, realities and to to the view uh, um, I can uh, I can put on and uh, I think it's important that uh, in replica um, uh, we developed a lot of activities in schools and in high schools and we went to uh, we also wanted to to go to schools uh, um, which are not so privileged and to work with uh, with kids who don't have access to to shows for instance we have worked and have done different uh, different shows or uh, different debates with kids who have never stepped into a theater and for us was really was really important to to go there and to keep contact to all this uh, to all these kids um, not only because we say that we uh, it's important to do theater for kids because we have the the audience of tomorrow now for us it's important to have the to to work with kids and teenagers Teenagers, because we think uh, uh, they could be more involved in these political realities and more aware of this, and they could respond to this. Um, because in a way, uh, probably you know or you don't know that when you say political theater or socially involved, engaged theater, when you say this in Romania, it's quite... Uh, uh, 
it's not so good. Mm -hmm. uh, also, because we we tend because of our history, sometimes we tend to uh, to um, make uh, to when we say political theater, we think about propaganda because we have this history in communism. But I guess it's very important uh, to to talk about these realities nowadays and to try to uh, to create uh, in a way a different kind of contra propaganda through theater and to bring about uh, subjects and uh, themes who are perceived only from, uh, from one perspective, as Mihaela said, or uh, to give them a broader, uh, a broader significance. And also to, um, to have, to, 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 per to allow different other audiences to have access to theater because theater in my opinion and i'm sure also in Mihaela's opinion and her group should be for everyone and should be and everyone should have in a way have access to to uh, to imagining realities and changing realities through theater so i guess this is one of the um, in a way the the yes the motives we are still here <laughs> Yeah, and uh, also Romania has a great, great history of theater. I think it's one of the countries also in in Europe that uh, uh, for a long time not, we have, of course, uh, Andrei Shaban, who is well known, Moshe Azur, who comes out of the Yiddish theater, the Jewish theater, also in in, in Bucharest. But um, but there has been uh, um, so many uh, Romanian significant uh, directors coming out who have also fought for a social. Um, justice so I think um, and every system needs updates so I think what you guys do also from the fringes from the marginalized um, um, uh, distance to the center you know you perhaps match a much clearer view of a of a, a Romanian a society of filmmakers at the moment are so significant uh, worldwide so lots of it is going on but there are yeah great great uh, problems uh, out there since the opening um, of the Berlin Wall and um, and it is something to work through and your work is needed. It's truly shocking to hear that even now um, there's police brutality uh, for clearly only racist reasons. And we heard from African-American playwrights who are with us also that they feel their families who, by the way, are making wills. You know, they say they work in the health industry, in the service industry. They don't have, uh, they say, uh, bank accounts. They don't have jobs since they be are forced now to make. <clears throat> make our wills and the white America looks at us as we are the ones who bring the diseases because they have higher percentage of diabetes and perhaps sometimes from, from personal medical problems and, and that they are now looked at as the ones who carry the disease even so um, we all know the virus does not distinguish um, between race and class and uh, culture so it's a it's a shocking um, thing to do and it's brave of you to, to, to be out there and do your work um, do you feel the time you are experiencing now is uh, has an impact on your artistic work? I and mean, if you are now in Bucharest in your in your rooms and it's a time to think, um, what do you do all day? And is anything changing in your in your in your view of the world? Totally, <laughs> totally. I mean, to be to be honest, I haven't been so creative these weeks and I just decided to not feel guilty about uh, this mm -hmm. uh, because like, it's really a difficult, difficult time and with everything that happens. So uh, I, I mean, at the beginning, I was just happy that I have time to rest, thing that I didn't have before. But uh, yeah, after two weeks, it became too much. And I'm, I honestly, I don't, I'm not doing anything creative. I'm just reading things or and uh, watching all the movies that I, I couldn't watch before because I hadn't have time. <laughs> but um, is uh, it's very difficult for me. I, I mean, I try, I, I try to write. I wrote some articles, but I couldn't write anything more. Like I didn't feel that I have the, the mental space to, to write a play or to do really something important. I, I don't know how, um, how Mihaela feels about this, but for me, like I couldn't, I, I feel that I, I don't have this, this energy now to do this. Yeah, for me, I have classes on Zoom 
and it becomes more and more uh, difficult. Um, I guess I, 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 in the beginning, I thought it would be, I don't know, it would be like a life classes. <laughs> it would be like going to university, but in fact, it's not. And I guess it's also um, in a way demotivating also for the, for the students because they don't seem to have any perspective and it's really, tough for those who are going to to finish in fact this uh, to graduate this year it's really really tough for them uh, because they should have uh, finished their shows or their plays and it's a little I mean, I, I was every single day when I have a class, I'm, I, I in a way face this, uh, this question, but uh, why am I doing this? Why do I have to finish my thesis or my play? And I guess it's quite, uh, it's quite an important question. And um, I was, uh, of course, in the, in the last weeks, I had uh, ups and downs. I try also to stay with my child because he's four years and he couldn't go to kindergarten. And uh, it begins to be more and more difficult also for the kids and also for us because uh, we have to work from home and being with the kids all the time it's not so easy when you have also to finish things um yeah so as Mihail, I, I i read some things i just watched movies but i didn't write too too much <laughs> but i yeah. guess it's also okay to to have i mean to think about this and i'm also a little bit fed up with this discourse that we should uh, be very optimistic and very like uh, try to do the best of our times i i, I i'm a little bit uh, also fed up with this discourse and also with the um, discourse that uh, we we should all be happy that we are going back to normality because i sh i think we should question more and more what this normality meant before and what normality would, would we would like to embrace because i think this is really really problematic <laughs> Do you feel people in Romania that they will question deeply what is happening? Is there something? Will something be happening when this is over? Do you feel there is a change going to be <clears throat> uh, coming? Uh, not, not really. I, I really hope that uh, now is the time for the revolution that we <laughs> always hope to happen. And yeah, exactly how Mihaela said, when we'll come back to this normal, we should question what the normal look like. But um, yeah, I don't, um, I don't think that many changes will happen. I don't, I, I mean, I'm, I try to keep distance from the social media, but at the same time I can't. And I, I'm, I'm just following people and I don't, um, I don't feel that something will happen like this revolution that everyone is hoping <laughs> hoping for will not really happen and it it was really a lot of disappointment uh, now with all the measures that the government took and we just felt i mean i felt powerless yeah yeah, more or less, I have the same impression that uh, not big changes <laughs> will uh, will be because I think the the people who um, who decide and who are uh, who have the power they they really don't question the system. For instance, in theaters, I doubt that the people who uh, who are managers of theaters uh, will really really think about the system of production. They have been before. Or I doubt they will they will really do this kind of reflection and try to in a way to think about I don't know what to, because we are talking about theater means being together but what this togetherness means in fact and for lots of theaters this means nothing uh, we have public uh, theaters which are financed by uh, um, who have public money but how public are they? Are they public? Uh, for whom they function, in fact? There are questions that they should, I mean, they, 
they should try to to reflect on and i doubt they they will really do because it's more uh, in a way it's uh, it's easier to be uh to keep your uh, your uh, your activities as you have had them before and really not to not to really reflect on what you could uh, you could do better and in a way try to to put aside the system of production which becomes more and more obsessive and the fact that that one show uh, ends and you have to produce another one and then another one and then another one and really not have time to reflect on mm -hmm. them to to create also other let's say i don't know territories of togetherness and i think it would it would be nice <laughs> if people <laughs> would take this time to reflect but i i really doubt what would you guys uh, dream up <clears throat> if you could for these? I like this phrase, the territories of togetherness um, for theater. What, what would you dream of? What would you what would you like to see in Bucharest in Romania? What would be a change you would embrace? Oh, I think, yeah, more support for um, independent sector. And like personally, I really I just repeat this every time I would really love to have a Roma State Theater in uh, in Romania in the future if if this will happen <laughs> yeah it will be clearly a change. To have a theater a stage that is a Roma theater dedicated yeah. to your work and culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah we never had in Romania and we we just request this we requested all these years but like nobody wants to hear us but um yeah this will be a real change <laughs> but i'm not so i i i really don't think that this will happen but yeah, yeah more, more support for the independent uh, sector will be wow <laughs> will be something that we all need mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with Mihaela. And also uh, for those who, I don't know, to, to, to our managers of theater to, in a way, to um, give birth to more possibilities because to invent, to invent more frames and to try to have more uh, different artists, even if they are theaters, I don't know, I would like to see, for instance, more choreographers uh, working in a theaters with different other artists. I mean, to be more open to different other formats or shapes or different other ways of, uh, of uh, framing uh, um, uh, performance, um, I don't know, performances and other things, because I think this is something that really lacks in <clears throat> a more uh, a broader perspective that those who really have money because they have theaters and they have uh, people who are employed there, they could allow more easily than us. We are really dependent on, on uh, funds. We are really dependent on a deadline. We are like very, we have to be very strict. We are also in cases of Mihaela actresses, producers, uh, cleaning stages and other things. Uh, so we are we are doing a lot of things and sometimes uh, unfortunately our creativity is uh, lax in a way because we have to we have to do all these things um, but I think it's really you are really lucky if you are working today uh, if you are the manager of a public theater today because I guess you could imagine more uh, more things and uh, it's a pity that those people who are there really don't uh, don't give birth to various possibilities of creating theaters mm -hmm. so we hope is any one of those theaters are listening or people who are in charge of it and uh, you know i think these are significant changes changes that actually get create better theaters i mean it's a human rights as we think access to health care access to education and access um, to the arts. And <clears throat> we know that the product, the theater is better if it's open, if they are um, in that post-traumatic way, they are different uh, uh, elements existing next to each other in the, in, the same, uh, in the same order, whether it's movement, light, writing, choreography, and this is uh, ensemble work is significant, different languages parallel on stage. And also as Milo Rao said again, what he tries, also Oscar Eustace just said, 
from the public theater in New York, perhaps it also has to get out of the spaces into the rooms of the city, whether they are outside or inside in different uh, forms. Uh, Milleraud said they are planning that they cannot go into the space anyway. Perhaps artists will inhabit or people could come all day and go in the theater or see an installation to use it in a different way, but um, to really create um, a dialogue and, and with the city and there's so much to es explore and, uh, and, and to, um, to build on. Um, so I think uh, uh, what you are um, thinking about or dreaming about is really, really also needed to get a better theater, to get a contemporary theater. And of course, there should also be the plays of the history uh, and, uh, uh, which you, you do have. And, but I think as Hans Hieslemann said, theater is a house, it has many rooms, but they also have to be new rooms that are inhabited and they have to be like in a museum where you have different centuries next to each other represented in art. It should also be, um, and that the same way. Again, I'm, I'm shocked to hear about the police brutality. I know that also Romania will be European capital of the culture, right? Uh, is it next year in Cebu or Cebu? Mishwara. Mishwara, yeah, yeah, in 2021. Yeah, actually, yes, the next year. Yeah, how, how um, so, you know, um, are you invited for that, Michaela? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about replica. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We are invited for um, for some events. Actually, some of some of them should have been happen uh, in May, but of course they are cancelled. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean we we received some some proposal to part to be there to participate with our shows there and even to organize bigger events together with other other collectives there but now everything is um, on hold on so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes we have also invited by the national theater but um, we don't know if we are going to do something or not because there are also financial problems with the capital and uh, there are uh, different uh, kinds of problems they are facing so nothing is really sure yeah is there anything you would uh, like to say or would you say you know, to fellow artists or people our listeners but also people in bucharest and their houses or so what gives you meaning or what do you feel is significant to focus on at the moment what should we be doing Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if I have an answer now. I mean, I haven't been thinking uh, about this. I, I really hope that this situation will bring us together. Yeah, I think. And um, also like how Mihaela said, like also the public state, the state theater, they will just rethink themselves and their artistic practices. And and so on because like we are doing a lot of us independent theater collectives here in Bucharest we are doing a lot of work here you know that the state theaters they don't do it and we we learn how to make responsible art you know and uh, respectful regarding all uh, all groups things that we don't see in the state uh, theaters you know like many times I've been uh, amazed to hear about uh, you know, like um, situation, uh, like, yeah, anti-feminist situation that happened in theaters or, you know, like we had uh, this recently, this, I mean, not so recently, but this, uh, this scandal with big, this big, uh, big director, Joldach, that is also in Germany a lot, you know, that was slapping an actress. And we felt that, you know, this is a moment to create. He was slapping an actress in the yeah, yeah, was, mm. yeah, 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 exactly. And we felt, you know, like we, the independent uh, theater makers, who really tried to open a debate about this, you know, because we are the ones who are doing, you know, a lot of responsible art in our in our collectives uh, yeah and actually the director of the theater he tried to uh, to defense to defense Joldach and not the actress and this was wow oh. Unac unacceptable yeah 
Yeah, exactly. So I don't I don't think that the state theaters they have the awareness that we have and they question the what we question it, you know. So uh, I I really hope that uh, they somehow they will be influenced by our practices because like I'm I mean in this moment like I'm not really interested but what is happening in the state theaters and I'm not going to see plays there very rarely I'm going like there. So I really hope that we somehow we will come together and the, the rights of the, the independent uh, artists here will be yeah, more defended and we we can influence them. Yeah, because like, <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Mihaela, Mihaela, what do you think? I don't know. It's quite a, um, it's quite a difficult question. I would say that um, it's important in a way to um, to think of this period as a time of uh, of um, changing a little bit our our former normality and not to long for for coming to that normality and to hope that that normality is really lost i hope it is lost because from many perspective it was very very problematic and uh, try to invent new 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 normalities and more inclusive and more reflexive and in a way uh, more careful to to these possibilities of change i guess this would be not to cry for what we lost but to hope we'll <laughs> we'll invent new new normalities what you might what you might gain and that a new normal should not be the old normal and exactly. uh, and that and perhaps, you know, uh, art and culture can contribute as uh, Romania, who is the host as the European capital of arts um, uh, in the coming year. So um, I thank you for, for, for sharing. I know that says not easy and um, we don't know enough. And it's also a big, a big, big place, Romania. We would have talked to other artists. We would hear a different perspective. But this is how our Mikaelas are experiencing this moment. It's very serious what they say. Um, what they think about. We are part of the world theatre community, so we admire you. It's important what you do and also staying in your place to act locally, but to think globally. You are connected to the contemporary world in theatre and uh, and um, we hope uh, we all will be back to the Seagull um, 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 one day. And to our listeners, thank you for, for listening in. I know how much is on your plate. Um, um, all day, maybe even now for lunch in New York uh, for the day, but it's been uh, it's been difficult times, and we also don't know what will happen. Over a thousand people again died in a day uh, in America, and um, it's uh, it's devastating. And about Zoom classes, the first students are suing universities to get their monies back. They feel Zoom is not adequate, you know. So how do we really um, in America where you pay a lot, you know? How, how does how is that whole system really working? And not so everything that's uh, not working, it shows, Richard Schechner said, it's like a, quoting a friend, it's like a nuclear reactor, which has a meltdown, but the roof is open and we look into it. It's a disaster. Everything that didn't work before is not working at all. And, um, and but there's hope. And as always, perhaps to learn something out of crisis and sometimes it has to come to a crisis. So tomorrow we have uh, Sue uh, Leka Alana from India, who will talk again uh, as a second guest from that great, great continent uh, to tell us about the reality in India uh, during the Corona time, but also what it means for theater artists. And then we have uh, St Stacy Klein from the Double Edge Theater in upstate New York, who runs theater out of the farm. And, and uh, Stephanie Monceau from the New York City Binnelstiff Family Circus, you know, to see what are those communities doing? How are they experiencing this, um, this, uh, this moment that is unprecedented? And as you guys said, and we don't know what will happen and uh, what is waiting for us. And it's hard on the theater community, on artists, they are the first on the line in a society, but they contribute so much, they produce imagination. And we have to, uh, have that uh, in order to imagine a better world and uh, so much so many problems we do have racism xenophobia and others uh, it, it, they come from a lack of failure of imagination so this work is significant and important and i hope Mihaela, maybe one day you will look back and say this is when i said we should have a roma theater and maybe one day you will get it it should be there as we should have a native american theater a stage at least one in the united states there is not 
Um, so um, this is a big global uh, global uh, uh, problem. So um, again, thank you all for, for listening. Thank you for HowlRound for hosting us to the Siegel team. And I hope you will have time to uh, chime in tomorrow. Thank you all very much. And to our listeners again, thank you for thank taking you the time to listen. Thank you. you. Thank you, thank guys. You. Thank you, Mirella. Thank you for sharing. It's time. We need to have great artists and great work to see. We also need great audiences and people who are interested because ultimately it's about them to also see that we have to act, that we are called to act, to be part of change. It's not just happening on the stage, but something is changing that we all are called for to be part of the change we want to see. Thank you very much. And thank you again and have a great, uh, great dinner, I hope, in, uh, in Romania. This was important for us to hear, to hear from you. Bye-bye.